Have you ever been in the situation where you're sitting around with the girl or boy of your dreams and they just really wanted to know how these high-rise buildings were constructed and you just couldn't tell them? I'm sure this happens a lot, so today is your lucky day because today I'm going to be giving you a crash course on how we build these tall high-rises. And again, this will be a very brief overview. There's a lot of details that go into building a tower, but at least this will give you the general idea of kind of how it gets done. So at the end of the video, if you have any more specific questions, I'll be sure to reply to you in the comments. And if you're new here, my name is Keenan and welcome to the channel. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see this dude from Hawaii talk about engineering and personal finance with the occasional Hawaii scenery. And speaking of scenery, we're going to need to change it up here. So to the board. So welcome to the board. So here we go, we're going to start building our building. So any good building starts with some ground. So let's start with some ground. So you'll likely have to start the project making sure that this ground is flat, so that you can work on the surface, you can put equipment on there, all that kind of stuff. So say this is relatively flat. Then after you get the site all nicely graded, then you have to start your foundations. And your foundations are always going to be the most important part of your building. So what your foundation sits on top is going to be important as well. So if you're doing just regular footings on a job, you'll have to have your ground underneath it compacted to a certain amount. For a lot of the high rises or the ones that I've seen in Hawaii, you'll have these things called piles. Piles. So a pile is essentially a very long column that is inserted into the ground that basically holds up the building. So like here's would be your pile, something like that underneath the surface. So you can do this in a couple of ways. You can do what is called a driven pile. You have a pile that you basically drive into the ground until you hit rock or for whatever length that the engineer will specify. So say like this is your earth down here. So that would be how you get your piles or and what is more common because it's not as loud and less disruptive to the area, you do this thing called auger cast piles. And basically a little drill will go down through the earth and make a, and make a hole in the earth. And then as it hits the rock, it'll pull the drill back up and fill it with concrete and basically creating a column in the ground. And you'll do this hundreds of times to hold up your building. So let's draw on the rest of the piles. Did I just run out of ink? What the hell? Okay, so now that you got your piles in, you'll have these things called pile caps, which are essentially little foundations that your columns will then sit on. So, here's your pile cap. And obviously this is a lot simplified, there's a lot more steps to this actual process to get it nice to this area but we'll just go from here get all that done and then you'll start your underground utilities and likely depending on how big your site is you'll be phasing it depending on what area you're working in but your underground utilities need to go in because you have to end up tying whatever the building is doing into the existing infrastructure into the streets the key to underground utilities is understanding who goes first so usually you always start with whoever is the deepest. And the elevations or however deep your lines are going to be really depends on what's existing in the street. Because you know the phrase, you know, poop flows downhill. It's very true. That's what you need to make sure happens when you're installing your new lines for the building. So say out here in the street, your connection point is somewhere down here. You need to make sure that where you're, where you're installing your new plumbing line or your waste line or storm drain line or whatever you're installing needs to be at an elevation that is above that which gives you the proper slope towards your connection point. So usually what ends up happening is your gravity lines will be the ones that govern and then all the electrical underground utilities will just go around it because you don't really need slope to make the electrical work. So let's say you have your lines and this, we're not going through the piles but it's just for illustration purposes only. You'll have you know, your line coming through here, sloping down to your connection point. And a lot of times too, you may not actually be making the connection to your connection point. You're just getting it outside of the footprint of the building. So maybe you'll stub it out to here and then you'll pick it up later. Something like that. And then say you have your electrical running over, over the top, whatever. Things like that. Well, I guess it would go into the building. So all your underground utilities are happening. Once you get all that done, you'll likely have a big mat foundation that you'll have to pour. 
which is essentially going to hold the core of your building. Depending on where the water table is, you may even need to waterproof some of these foundations. And you also have to make a tower crane foundation. So that'll go somewhere in here as well. And these will likely tie into your existing piles, which helps, you know, the whole structure come together. So you'll erect your tower crane a certain amount to a certain height. Tower crane. So yes, you have your tower crane up, you have your mat foundation in. So now you can start building. So depending on how the building is engineered, you'll either start with your columns off of your pile caps or you'll start with your slab and then pour your columns off of that. Just depends on your engineer. So let's say in this case, we're pouring our slab first. So here's our slab on grade, woo! And they say slab on grade, grade means ground. And this is such a huge milestone for the project. So I spent kind of a little bit of time talking about the underground because it is so hard to actually get out of the ground. The whole waterproofing process, the piling process, building your foundations, all that stuff takes a long time. So it's such a good feeling to get this first slab on the ground because it gives you a flat working surface so you can put materials down. You don't have to worry about it raining if you have a bad if you have a bad substrate on the ground that like muddies out every time it rains. It's just so nice for you to get that first slab in. And then you start to build. So on top of that slab, you'll build again above the pile caps, you'll have your columns. Come back here, column. You'll probably have your core here, your core, well, your core walls where your elevator will likely be. And then you'll have another thing here. So then now you're starting to build vertically and you'll always pour these to the underside of the deck above. So unless you have an underground like parking garage or something like that, which is a whole nother animal in construction, but usually the first few floors will be for parking or some sort of retail space. So a lot of times the first few floors of the job, kind of similar to, you know, getting out of the ground, are just a lot harder for you to do. Because it's so low to the ground, the columns are bigger, there's bigger loads that are being transferred down for the building. So you have bigger beams, you'll have slopes for the ramps. So it's just a lot more of a complicated structure. And because the footprint is so big, you have to split everything into multiple pores. So it just takes a little bit longer. But anyhow, so say you're doing your podium, Say so you have your podium, podium slab here, right? Your level, another level. You probably have like a ramp or something in here coming from whatever floor. So that's your podium. Say this is, you know, about, I don't know, seven floors or so. And you know, that'll be the footprint of your building. And then likely the top of the podium, you may have like an amenity deck or something like that where you'll have to finish. So that'll end up being like its own separate project on its own. The amenity deck, you know, will likely have some sort of pool, gym, uh, landscaping, you know, trees or whatever. So tree on the amenity deck, tree, tree. Draw ourselves a little pool. Ooh, pool. So this will be happening separate of what's gonna be happening next. So then you'll have your tower. And the tower is where you'll really see things to pick up in construction. The tower is where you're going to be able to hit a cycle, you're gonna be able to hit repetition. You know, like I was saying before on the podium and under here, it's kind of atypical, bigger footprint, more complicated with slopes, different beams. Once you hit the tower, you should be able to go, go, go. So your tower footprint, so you'll start with your columns, floor, column, and you'll be able to probably finish a floor probably once a week when you start to hit the real tower. So you'll go, 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 go. So you just start to pick up, pick up, pick up. And then once you hit a few floors or so, so probably once you hit about three or four floors above your tower, and oh, wow, this is a pretty cool one. It's leaning to a little bit to the side. <clears throat> but once you hit a few floors or so, you want to make sure that you start to get your windows in. The reason why you need to start to get your windows in a few floors below is because you need to start drying in the building because you can't start any finish work, mainly drywall, if you can't guarantee or keep the space dry. You're gonna create mold problems, it's gonna be just such a huge issue. So you don't wanna to be too close to the top because you are, you're too exposed to the elements. You don't wanna to be too far behind because then your finishes won't catch up with your structure. So usually at this point, you'll start to put in your windows so windows here, and you'll just start to keep going so that your finishes can follow. Because another thing that you also don't want 
is there is a tendency when you pour the concrete slab that you'll have slurry or essentially just like the liquid part of the concrete that falls down the building it gets in your windows so the limestone in the concrete will start to eat the glass or eat the aluminum framing things like that just to minimize all of that the rule of thumb is just a few floors below your active deck but then you also may be wondering, Keenan, how do they even get materials into the building? So you have your tower crane, and I forgot to draw it earlier, but you'll have this thing called a hoist. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's like a little elevator on the outside of the construction building that kind of uh, that just goes all the way up. And you have like a little car. Actually, the car would be on the... <laughs> so you'd be able to get to the building, but you get the idea. There'll be a little car that goes up and down that will allow you to bring materials in from the side into the building. So you have to think about all these things, where the tower crane is going to be, where your hoist is going to be, and where it makes sense within your building before you really even start. But I digress. So now you're looking at this and you're like, well, sir, your tower crane is not tall enough for your building and you're still going to keep going. So you have to have your tower crane jump. So, you, I'll probably, so that's a whole other topic about how this tower crane can actually jump, but it can, and it can do it on its own, which is pretty nifty. And then your tower crane will tie back, and it obviously wouldn't be this far in real life, but it will tie back to your building. And this is why I said before that you need to make sure that your hoist and your tower crane locations matter and are well thought through because you won't be able to finish these units where the thing or where the hoist and the tower crane are tying back to. You have to come back and finish that later. But anyhow, we're gonna keep building. Oh, built above my crane, but you get the you get the idea. You get to the point where everything gets to be dried in. So then we finally finish the last concrete on the top roof. It's called topping off. You want to make sure that your structure keeps going so you can top off and then you want to be able to roof this thing or roof depending on how you say that word so you want to make sure that you get this roofed roofed so that your whole building is dried in you have your windows in you have your roof on so you know that your risk of anything happening within your building is pretty low such a key component to a building and then at some point you have to take down this crane and you have to take down this hoist though. Anyhow, so the hoist, you have to find a way to take down the hoist, take down the crane, but you have to do a couple checks first. A lot of the times there will be heavy equipment up on this roof. Or you have some kind of heavy pick that you need to make with the crane that you need to make sure that you get done before you take all this stuff down. So fine, you did your due diligence. You come back through, start taking down your crane and you'll find out later, or not later, but you can, you can find videos on YouTube that show you some pretty cool nifty drawings or videos about how this crane actually uh, dismantles and erects itself. And then you'll take down your hoist, you'll come back and you'll pour back where the crane was. And you have to come back, finish the tie back units where the hoist was, where the crane was. And then you'll start to continue to complete your finishes throughout the tower. Throughout the finishes process, you'll do something called a punch list, which is essentially a checklist of all the items that you find as the contractor. And then you make your sub trades fix whatever mistakes that there are. And then you'll do something with the developer of the project. You'll do that punch list before you actually turn over the building. There'll also be a series of testing certifications that you need to get for like your mechanical, electrical, and plumbing to make sure that it passes all the codes. You have inspectors come in, verify all what they need to do. And as you're finishing up that part, once you finish up topping off and the finishes are going on in this tower, you'll likely be knocking out this amenity deck or you'll be doing some sort of retail space down here or you'll probably be doing some civil work out here. So remember this tie-in out here, likely you'll be making that tie-in or you'll be doing some sidewalks, some paving, maybe more, more trees out here and then your building will be done. So pretty simple, right? The hardest part of building the tower is pretty much right here. Doing all the atypical, more complicated work will, all, will usually happen below your typical floors. So now at your Christmas dinner, you'll be able to tell everybody how this guy from Hawaii taught you how to build a building. So I know this was very oversimplified. I didn't go into a lot of details about how a lot of this stuff works, but I hope this gave you a little bit of an idea of how a building goes up. So if you really enjoy videos like this or are just amazingly fascinated by my artistic talent, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can join our growing family here on YouTube. And if you have any further questions about this or anything that I talked about, feel free to comment below and I'll be sure to reply to you. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate your time and I'll see you on the next video.